You've taken some photos, you've thrown them in Lightroom for the first time, and a sense of dread just washed over you as you think, what do all these sliders do? Well, don't worry, I'm here to help. We're gonna go through them one by one, so let's just get started. So first we need to talk about what Lightroom is. It's a tool for photographers who wanna edit their photos and take it to the next level, rather than just throwing a photo in Instagram and slapping a filter on and hoping for the best. It allows you full control of your image so you can manipulate specific parts of an image. For example, say you wanna bump up the brightness of someone's eyes, you can go into that much detail on this program. To get the best results, I recommend shooting your photos in RAW, as this format allows the most latitude when pushing your photos to the limit and you can even recover lost details in under or overexposed areas. Have you used Adobe Lightroom before? Let us know what the first photo was that you edited in this program. Just a general rule of thumb when editing your photos, I find anyway that less is more when you're moving these sliders around. You don't want to be bumping things up to 100 or minus 100. Just really fine details goes a long way in this program. It's a really powerful piece of software. So just keep in mind that you don't want to be over editing. It's important to nail the exposure in camera and then use Lightroom as a tool for just fine tuning your images. So let's jump into Lightroom and we'll start editing our photos and see what all the panels are all about. The first panel we have here is the light panel and this controls all the main aspects of your photos and when you adjust these sliders the whole image will be affected. Right at the top we have exposure and this is how bright your photo is. So as you can see if we slide it all the way to the left the photo goes completely black and then vice versa, if we slide it all the way to the right, it's blown out and you can't see any of the detail. So I usually tend to mess with the exposure slider at the end of doing all of the other adjustments in the light panel, as this is kind of a broad stroke of lighting or darkening the image. You might just need a little bit of a bump at the end once you've messed around with all the other sliders, but it's just good to know that this is just brightening or darkening the image in general. So next up, we have contrast. Contrast in photography refers to the gap between the brightest part of the image to the darkest part of the image. So if you have a high contrast image, the gap between the brightest and the darkest part will be very big. And if you have a low contrast image, it will be a smaller gap between the lightest and the darkest point of the image. And as you can see that when we move the contrast slider to the right, like I said, it looks over edited if we go all the way to 100, but at the same time, if you make it minus 100 and go to the left and take contrast away, the image just looks flat and boring and you don't want that. So on this one, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit to about 20, 20 to 25, 23. So right below contrast, we have the highlights and the highlights are the brightest part of the image where the most light is hitting the sensor when you take the photo. Having well exposed highlights is really important in photography because if you've got an overexposed part where the highlights are blown out and they're lacking detail, it can be really distracting to what is the focal point of your image. So I always tend to, in Lightroom, drop the highlights. And as you can see, we've gained detail back in the sand and even in the trees in the back on the right here. So contrastingly below highlights, we have the shadows. And like we've done with the highlights there with the brightest part, we've dropped them down. The shadows are the darkest part of your image. So what we wanna do is we wanna bump that up slightly to recover detail in the darkest parts of the image. So below highlights and shadows, we have the whites and the black slider. Now these I like to think of kind of more detailed exposure sliders. So I tend to drop the white slider a little bit just to make sure there's no distracting bright parts of the image. And with the black slider, I want to make sure that I have a true black point in the image that something is absolutely black, but make sure that the detail in that part is still there. So really minute detail here. I'm going to go minus two. That looks good. And so we've gone from using these fine adjustments from this, for now the image looking like this, just using the light panel sliders and look at the difference already. There's so much more detail. The image is so much more exciting. Below the light panel, we have point curves. Now this helps you not only manipulate how the light looks through the whole photo, but how the light through the RGB channels look and really helps you manipulate the colors of the image. And I know it sounds complicated, but don't worry, that's a whole other video in itself. So just keep an eye out for that because it's coming soon. Okay, so we've changed pictures now and we're gonna go to the color section. So the color panel of Lightroom can completely change the mood of your picture by changing the colors to how you want them to look, creating your own style of photography. So the first slider in the color panel is temperature, and this is essentially the white balance of your image. So if we look at the slider here and move it to the right, it gets warmer, it gets more orange. 
if we move it all the way to the left, it gets cooler, it gets more blue. So you kind of, again, don't wanna to go too crazy with this one. So I kind of leave it in the middle, slightly more towards the orange side. So we're gonna say it's 7,000 Kelvin here. So below that we have tint. And now this will put either a magenta or a green tint onto your image. Again, we don't wanna to go too crazy with this unless you're going for a stylized image. So I'm gonna keep it around plus 14 in the magenta, kind of just keeping it around that sort of section. And I think that looks great so far. Below tint, we've got vibrance and saturation. Now this essentially makes your colors pop if you wanna amplify it and sort of dims the colors if you wanna take it to the left towards the negative. This is a general adjustment to your image and you don't wanna go too crazy with these as you'll see below because we have the HSL sliders. We'll get into that in a sec. So I'm kind of just gonna leave this around there. I'm even gonna take the saturation down to probably around negative between 20 and 25, 24. I'm gonna take it down to negative 24 because underneath we have the HSL panel. Now this is the real meat and potatoes of you being able to generate your own style as a photographer as you can manipulate the hue, saturation and luminance of each color in the photo. I like to have it in this setting where you adjust the all three sliders for each color rather than doing the hue for each one, the saturation for each color. So the main colors we have in this image, skin tone is usually orange or yellow. We have green in the hat. So we're gonna start with those colors first and with the orange and go up there. About 36 is good. So you can see the difference there in my hand. You can see the skin just looks a little bit more warmer and just make it a little bit brighter. And again, you wanna be mindful about how aggressively you're moving the sliders. You don't wanna bump them up too much unless you're going for a really stylized look. Um, for example, if I threw this up to 100 now, my skin tones look ridiculous in here. So just keep that in mind and be intentional and really pay attention to how far you're adjusting it and if it's too far. And it might change, say you've done the orange one first and you've gone through the whole edit, you might wanna look back and just maybe just do fine adjustments at the end once you've gone through the image. So just be mindful about keeping these adjustments small. So we've gone from this image at the start to this and look at the colors in that now like it's focused in and dialed in onto myself as a self-portrait and really bringing the audience's attention to the focal point of the image. So for some people, different parts of the editing process could be their most difficult part. So let me know down below what you find most difficult when you're using Lightroom. Below the color panel, we have effects. And I'd say that this is the panel where the general rule of less is more and being intentional about how you use the sliders in Lightroom, this is the one to really take that into consideration because no one wants to have a picture of themselves with 90 clarity on it because then you'll look like this. So only a few sliders in this section, but really powerful tools that can make your image go from, oh, that's a nice photo to wow, that's a great photo. So let's start from the top. We have texture right at the top and this does what it says it does. So if you add to it and move it to the right, the textures of everything like the rocks in this image here will be boosted up. And I find the sweet spot for most things, 20 to 30. But that's just, again, photography is personal preference. But for me, 20 to 30 is a good range to kind of look at. So clarity, this essentially just makes the image clearer. Clarity, clearer. So this one, I just don't go too high with it, especially with people. If you've got a person in the photo, I wouldn't recommend going over 15. Because we've got just buildings in this picture, I'm gonna throw it up to about 35. And look at that, it's already starting to look a lot better. If we just see the original, it's starting to look a lot better. Dehaze right underneath clarity does exactly what it says on the tin. If you've got a hazy image like this one of the beach with the haze coming in, it just takes that haze away. It makes the colors a little bit more richer. So if I slide that all away, you can see how drastic that is dehaze. So we just want to start to see a little bit of those buildings on the end there. And as you can see, they're just coming in throw that to about there. Now what I do is I tend to use vignette as a large radial mass to kind of focus the viewers into the center of the image. So I'm gonna put this to about minus eight. 
just to get a little bit of a radial mask, making the edges slightly darker and kind of drawing everyone into the middle. Have you ever wondered how people get their digital photos to look like the analog film looks and make it look all kind of cinematic? Well, I'd put money on them using a lot of grain in their images, and this is where it's gonna be your friend. So in this image here, it looks great, but it needs that little bit of drama. So I'm just gonna add grain in, and look at that, just a little bit of character to the image now. And again, it's all personal preference, but if you want a kind of film look, grain is your friend. Now the last section in Lightroom with a lot of sliders is geometry. Now I tend to use the auto function in this because I'm quite lazy. And if a function's in a program to make it easy for you, why not use it? So as you can see of this fantastic picture of Jorge, it's not quite level. So just click where it says upright into auto and look at that, you can see with the grid now, the right down the middle, the reflection of Jorge is dividing straight down the middle of the image. All these sliders below are to help you get rid of distortion in your image due to the lens that you choose. Especially if you're using a wide angle lens to do landscapes, for example, they're really powerful tools to help you get the image to exactly how you saw it and how you want it to look. The one I use most personally is Rotate, and this is just to make sure that my horizon is level in the image and just make sure that it's straight and it looks great. Photography is subjective and it's all about personal preference. So find what works for you, throw your images into Lightroom and just play around and have fun with it until you find your style. What else would you like to learn in Lightroom? Let us know in the comments below.